Learn the most advanced recruiting techniques. Land the most desirable talent. Launch your company towards massive success. This is the Higher Power Radio Show with Rick Gerard. Abolish the resume. So uh, companies miss out on great people because they never make it past the, re the resume screen. Some of the most talented people I've placed throughout my career have had terrible resumes and probably have been passed over by tons of companies. Frankly, automating the process and screening for buzzwords is just silly. I always like to start the show out with a quote. Today's quote is, insanity is knowing that what you're doing is completely idiotic, but still somehow you just can't stop it. Any idea who said that, Anita? I would say, hmm, Elizabeth Wurzel. Boom, spot on. Did I feed you that answer Great. or something? No. Weird. No, not at all. Good for you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm Rick Gerard, and welcome to the Higher Power Radio Show. Our mission is to disrupt recruiting. We share insights from top performing entrepreneurs and industry experts and provide proven tactical solutions to solve your company's toughest hiring challenges. Today, our guest is Anita Conti. She's the executive talent manager of Huawei Technologies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I sang it. Um, she's a global business partner and senior manager supporting executive leadership deliverables for leadership talent acquisition needs for the U.S. and China marketplace. Uh, as a strategic manager, she offers pro progressive solutions that help her company and her clients optimize their strengths and create pathways to success. Anita is a proven expert in talent recruitment, both in leading corporations such as her current corporation, Huawei, as well as Broadcom, United Healthcare, and uh, built her own company at one point, right? Yes. So let's just say it's safe to say <coughs> Anita has looked at a lot of resumes I sure throughout have. her career. <laughs> Anita, welcome to the Higher Power Radio Show today. Thank you, Rick. I'm happy to be here, and I love that introduction. You like that? I like the jingle. I'm going to yeah. start singing. I like the jingle. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. start singing the company. I'm going to nominate you to our branding team. <laughs> yeah. All right. Hope you guys <laughs> Thank pay you well. very much. Hope you guys pay well. <laughs> All right, so today we're going to cover a couple of things. Um, we're going to talk about everything that's right and everything that's wrong with the resume. Mm. And then we're going to create uh, kind of some alternative solutions to resumes that solve kind of the resume black hole, as I like to call it. So Absolutely. let's start with, I always like to start on a positive note. Me too. So let's talk about what's good about resumes. Well, I think uh, a couple of things, Rick. One, it's a presentation of your career. Sure. And it's a tool to showcase your professional background, experience, overall talents, and objectives. Um, two, a lot of people don't look at it this way, but I do, but it's a strategic opportunity to brand yourself from a professional light to make that first impression, where in most cases, your first impression is your one and only chance. But often that's just not done, though. It's not. Yeah. It's not done. And then I think three... I, I also think it's a conversational piece um, for employee and employer connections. So when you're hanging out, you go, hey, check out my resume. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> How are you doing? Check out the resume on that one. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so, why not? Why not? All right. So <clears throat> I think there's only three good things about resumes. Okay. So contact information is ah, on a resume. Yes, that's very valuable. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> you can actually see the person's career history, and I think that's a very, very valuable thing. I agree with that. But, um, and then my favorite part of a resume is the white space. Why is that? Because I feel like that everything that has happened, anything that's accomplishment, anything that is noteworthy or worthwhile is actually not on a resume. It's more in the white space. I completely agree. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would call that the gray area, right? Mm -hmm. I like that gray I area. Like, I like the gray area, quote unquote. You use gray paper, I use white paper. <laughs> <laughs> Prefer the white paper for resumes is my professional, <laughs> my professional tip. All right, so we, we found a few things that we like about resumes. Now let's talk about a, kind of what's missing, right? So mm -hmm. I think we, let's choose some holes in this because it's not a marketing document, really, and it should be. It really should be, and just it can a, be. Just as a job description should be a marketing document for the company. Yes. But I digress, let's go back to the resume. So um, how do we do that? Well, I think it's really imperative to keep a few things in mind, especially on the candidate side. Um, I know I know you and I have had discussions before about those SEO special keywords. And I get oh, a yeah, lot we'll of questions. I get a lot of questions yeah. from candidates that what kind of specific keywords will the applicant <laughs> tracking systems from corporate America really pick up and, and, and they're really unique and sometimes trendy. Yeah. And, and, and they definitely vary. But 
My pet peeve is having a resume with non-related content. It can be self-sabotaging, Rick. Okay. Um, phrases, uh, descriptions that may be controversial and maybe even invite bias. But let's go, let's go to the ATS system because mm -hmm. I, I read a statistic that 80% of resumes that go into large companies or like um, get filtered out by the ATS system before they even get read by human eyes. Is that true? Sometimes that is true. Okay. And it really depends on who's managing the ATS and what role they want to play with it. There are, there are opportunities for inside corporate recruiters to actually filter through each resume that yeah. formally applies to the applicant tracking system. But sometimes, um, you know, when we're doing other searches not related to maybe a specific job search, but maybe there's a staffing plan coming about, we want to do some pre-work, sure. then yes, uh, we will navigate through an applicant tracking system and perform sophisticated Boolean searches with the hopes that candidates will pop up in a ranking fashion. And yes, the, the more keywords one has on their resume, the higher they're going to be ranked. And then that there there is a you know, there is a common understanding that, woohoo, this is a, per a person that's probably a close match. Yeah. I don't know if I always agree with that, but it is one indicator. See, I, and I can see why it's done at scale. When you have a lot of positions up and you have a large recruiting team and, and large companies, you, you kind of, it's by necessity you have to do that. You do. Because you don't have the ability to call everybody, right? Absolutely. But I think as a result, you're probably missing a good percentage of, fantastic hires. I couldn't agree with you more, yeah. especially building a talent pipeline for the future, yeah. which is very hard to be proactive on, but needs to be done a lot more often than it really is. Well, and, and that can be done in different ways. I think at a smaller scale, because this is why I tend to support smaller companies, mm -hmm. because you're, you're much more agile and you have the ability to call every person that- You sure do. Well, okay, so you have to d d differentiate the two types of people that you go after. First off, you have people who apply which that's a relatively low the amount of candidates. Yeah, absolutely. Those, those those get the least amount of love, right? In many cases, unfortunately, so. Yeah, um, and then you have the people you go after and you recruit. Mm -hmm. And if a company doesn't have an active recruiting program, they might pull from referrals. Absolutely, or something to that which is effect. another great way. Yeah. Yes, yes, definitely. Or via agencies. Correct. <clears throat> Correct. So, so, when you're when you're applying to a portal versus a, having an agency represent you, usually it's a squeaky wheel gets the oil, right? I agree. Yeah. I definitely agree. And sometimes it's it's the luck of the straw, right time, can a right, right pair of eyes really understanding and drilling down to the to, to the you know areas of the talent they're really looking for. Yeah. So there's a lot of conduits to this. But here's the thing, most recruiters don't know what a good person is for some of the roles that they're supporting. And they, they might have a, a rec load of 25 recs, right? Correct. And so now you've got a situation where um, they can't effectively judge you because they're just, they're... They're being transactional. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Thank and you for filling in the blanket. <laughs> <laughs> no, I couldn't I, find I, that I, word. I definitely agree. And it's even difficult, even in my role, speaking personally, yeah. um, not to really get into that habit or into that theme. Um, but um, I, I think you're. I think you hit the nail right on the head. So effectively, you, if you're looking for a job, you need to load your resume up with keywords. I think that can't hurt, but that shouldn't be your one and only main goal. But the problem that I've found is that people will put every keyword on the resume, like you know. Okay, so tell me about your Java experience. Well, I don't really have any Java experience. I read it in a book one time, so, and I so just it goes put it on, on the resume. resume. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Well, I think a very good, you know, there's a social responsibility on our side, Rick, to really dig deeper than that. Yeah. And to not assume that if if an incumbent has the word Java on their resume, they're an expert in Java per se. Yeah. So the resume again, going back to what's the goal, it's really a key to get insight and make a decision if we're interested in further conversations and or more importantly an interview. Yeah. So it is in the candidate's best interest to have a resume with some broadness is very common, but really pinpointed accomplishments and true valuable experience that they do offer. So I, you know, how many times have we heard from managers in interviews, well, I didn't, the candidate didn't pass my test because they couldn't speak to their resume. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't hear it much anymore because 
probably about 50% of the my clients who actually get resumes. A lot of times sure. I don't even provide a resume. I'll just provide maybe a LinkedIn profile. But sure. more important to me is, is my assessment that I provide to them. I agree. Yeah. And, and I think all in all, resumes do provide a couple of gaps. Yeah. Question is, does it really give a hiring leader the accurate image of a candidate? And candidate and resumes aren't able to demonstrate their soft skills. And hiring leaders on the other side of the interview deck fail to capture the critical the critical components of a candidate, such as communication style, delivery, energy, tonality, and other really Cultural important, fit. yeah, and other yeah. really important and imperative interpersonal skills. So relying on resume assessments as the main indicator, um, I don't think Rick captures all the areas and sometimes also contributes to more bias in the initial interview phase, especially when decision makers have their own thoughts and practices of how resumes should be written. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And, and those aren't often in alignment <laughs> with their best interest. Correct. Yeah, they're, they're Correct. kind of learned responses to what they think might be a good. A hiring manager, somebody posted a question uh, yesterday on LinkedIn. They said, um, do hiring managers often interview well? And there was a barrage of responses, mainly from recruiters, I think. I'm sure. They were all saying, no, none of them. <laughs> None of them do, but they. Sh and I think I responded, yeah. But I know a few that sure know how to screw up interviews. <laughs> I know both. Yeah. I think there's. I think there's two coins on that. I, right. I know both. All right. So <laughs> we've got wrong keywords. We have no keywords. Resumes with no keywords, I think, are the most problematic. There are people that actually do accomplishment-based resumes. Correct. And they'll talk about exactly what they did, but they don't have the keywords in there, and they get screened out too. They sure do. Yeah. They so sure do. as as a recruiter or as a hiring manager, you should be able to dig underneath the covers to find out. You what's really there. should. Yeah. I agree with you. So then you would agree with me that you should call every candidate. I don't agree with you there. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes yeah. it's not. Uh, it was worth it's a not, shot. It's not, it's not a desire of not being interested in seeing the value of that. It's simply sometimes talking about bandwidth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, then, so then that just poses the question of, well, maybe you have a situation where you restructure your your recruiting department to where maybe mm -hmm. you do have people that just do phone calls. I don't know. I mean, I, I, you know, with I, this big push for automation, I, sure. I don't know at your scale. You knew better than I sure, do. Sure, sure. I mean, I have my own thought process on that. I think there's some I'll value. That in the back <laughs> I think there's some value with, with maybe following up on employee referrals. Yeah. You know, candidates that are socially interested helping us brand our internal opportunities and they're making conscious efforts to reach out to their network and say hey come work for us and this is why yeah. and, and et cetera et cetera so that's so valuable employee Rick, right? referrals are the best source it really is hands it, down employee referrals are the best <laughs> source of candidates it really you is heard it, her first <laughs> so in, in when, when companies have progressive employee referral programs i yeah. think there's an advantage to call almost if we can, the bandwidth allows it, yeah. to call the employee referrals. Well, I think every employee referral should be called. I mean, it would be just, wonderful. That would be a, well, not only that, you, you're creating a brand ambassador too. You really are. And, and uh, again, if, you, if, if you're not doing it, you're probably putting yourself in a bad position and you're probably putting yourself in a position where you can set yourself up for bad glass door reviews, right? Definitely, And people yes. love those these days. They sure do. Yep. But uh, having a very robust employee referral program mm -hmm. supports attrition and so many other areas that it transcends to on why our, our environment is a great place to work. Yeah. And that's at the end of the day what's really important to all of us, isn't it, Rick? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to leave it with one last thing, which is the worst thing that's about a resume is that people lie. That's very true. <laughs> <laughs> we all lie on resumes. Well, I don't because I don't have a resume. <laughs> so we're talking to Anita Conte. She's the executive talent manager for Huawei Technologies. <laughs> we need to take a quick break. But when we come back, we're going to talk about um, alternative solutions to your resume. Let's see if we can change the world, right? <laughs> Be right back. You're listening to Hire Power with Rick Gerard, giving you access to recruiting techniques that will help you hire key talent to build your company towards real success. Rick is a recruiting executive and entrepreneur who's been successfully recruiting in the aggressive Silicon Valley technology landscape for the past two decades. 
After a very successful stint at Apogee, he founded Stride Search in 2012. Based on a lean efficiency model, Stride has uniquely positioned itself as a leader in retained search for the most critical talent hires within a small organization. Whether you're a startup executive or recruiting professional, by listening to Hire Power with Rick Gerard, you will walk away with skills to help you attract and hire great talent. Now back to Hire Power with Rick Gerard. Welcome back to the Higher Power Radio Show. I'm your host, Rick Gerard. And our guest today is Anita Conti, the Executive Talent Manager for Huawei Technologies. We were just discussing why we need to abolish the resume. I, we're both in agreement of that one. Um, and now we're going to explore better options to effectively find talented people. All right. So you have an idea you shared with me. I'm going to let you dig into it. Okay. Thank that you, you, Rick. you thought might be, a, might be a good alternative. I think so, Rick. Talk to me. So a little background with our unemployment low and you know, being part of a very competitive landscape, candidates really need to highlight their and cheer their career performance and finding strategic ways to deliver those results. So one of the ideas I think is very strategic and it's not new, it is out, yeah. but it's, not, it's, it's probably not as fashionable as the traditional resumes as far as applying um, organically and traditionally to corporations, is creating an online video resume. It may be a really good way to promote yourself and your uniqueness. This really, Rick, sets you apart and gives you an opportunity to sell a value proposition. Okay. Video resumes lets the employer literally see see you and hear your case via your communication skills, your personality, your charisma, as the best candidate for the job, all before the interview takes place. All right, so I'm gonna be the devil's advocate here. So what if I have a really shitty personality? <laughs> I can't communicate. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that candidates have more self-confidence and don't think they have a crappy personality. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Like that I, may be your be viewpoint, devil. but I would definitely ping pong that <clears throat> off a couple of you, you know, key people in your network to get that validated. And if so, <laughs> maybe a couple of tips to actually turn that around. Well, if you have that's no really friend, important. if your best friend is a chihuahua <laughs> named Taco Bell and, uh, and hey, frankly, nobody surprised. else will talk to you, I mean, <laughs> that's not going to be able to be done. I would say try harder. All right, so I, I, I kind of like the idea, but I kind of don't get it, right? So okay. I, I can see where it works at scale, but I think for a smaller company. So you're, you're saying create your own video resume. Well, actually, there are a couple of companies out there that I would take as a step one okay. and like connect with them. Um, one, uh, and I don't have an affiliation, but is Spike Hire. Okay. And there's, an, there, there's a second one in our industry called Beehive. So I'm not affiliated with either one, but they do have video platforms and they engage with both candidates and companies and make a very simple mobile online step-by-step -step process on creating 60 second videos okay. um, with uh, of course the other conduits about the resume um, as a key selling point. Actually, Rick, according to Spike Hire, this video platform company, um, they say, or according to their statistics, they show that a 60 second video resume can definitely give you a better chance to get noticed by employers as the paper resumes are only looked at by us recruiters for about six seconds before we make a decision. Got it. All right, so then that would imply that the company has to do some work then and provide the questions that they answer in the video content. I think that would be a really strong recommended practice yeah. or even a guided script. But that's more work for your HR department. Actually, it's not because no. the company that would be working with your ATS and your company, that strategic business partner will, will, will be the fundamental middleman to give all that education on both sides. Okay, okay. So I'm going to also be the devil's advocate here and talk about the fact we're in California. Correct. And you have things like discrimination bias. Mm. And doesn't a video lend to that? Oh, Rick, I don't agree with that at all. Okay. I really don't. I think, first of all, this goes back to companies' diversity goals. And yeah. those should be a priority mm. and part of every recruitment strategy. Um, but I don't believe there's any more bias than the traditional resumes. There's a lot of bias on, on names, um, on dates if they're provided, especially in the educational fields, race, a among other things. Yeah. So I really challenge to say, you know, how do we measure if there would be more bias? I think there would be, in hindsight, it, you know, the other side to 
provide that hum that human element factor, which I think is very, <laughs> very, very valuable. I, I would agree. I would agree. I see a lot more value in that than I do a paper resume. Oh, good. But I don't think it's the number one. I don't think it's the best answer. Well, I think, <laughs> and, and again, I'm not saying a video resume should replace um, a traditional resume, mm -hmm. but maybe an added to that, just like we see, you know, in LinkedIn profiles. Yeah. So we have a traditional resume, but a part of the assessment is what we're trying to enhance and close some initial gaps. And that would be very beneficial to have that video element to it. And just to throw back to the first segment, make sure your LinkedIn profile matches up with your resume. Very, yes. I agree with that. I, I've had <laughs> people say, I don't want to talk to that guy because there's different dates or, the, you know, things were messed up. In I, I think, yeah, I think that's a very, I think social proof, right, Rick? I mean, yeah. we, we've got a resume to confirm our background, but the more social proof that we have in our professional landscape, the better. So I, I put AI as a question mark. So, because there's a big push for AI and, right. and machine learning and, and actually AI injected into um, the whole recruiting process. Okay. I still, I, I feel like that's just a tool. Okay. But I don't know, I, and a lot of people are putting in weight into that's going to be like the holy grail of solving all of our hiring issues. That's what we're hearing. That's what we're hearing. I don't know if I believe that. Well, I definitely think AI among finding other ways to up our game in recruiting candidates and, and really filtering more effectively through that assessment process is going to involve technology. Yeah. More technology is going to be introduced. Maybe an ATS will be um, a very different size and scope as far as how they are today. And they, ha they may have those components. And I'm a big fan, everybody, of, you know, this is maybe not a mandate, but a voluntary, you know, on the candidate side. What do you so, mean? so maybe you know, like you had said earlier, that candidates are really nervous, and 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 what if they don't feel like they have a good personality, and they may not be able to put their best foot forward, or be in front of the camera is very exactly. You know. So it's not a mandate per se. This is just a you know, I think this would be a value add, a voluntary way, just like a LinkedIn profile is also very voluntary. It's not a mandate. Yeah. Um, but uh, again, going back to having a complete application. Uh, a job application? Yes, like a, a complete application and representation of who you are from the get-go. Got it. Okay. Um, so just on, on the terms of AI, I think AI is great. I think it's a tool. It will not help you engage with candidates, so that's the problem. It, it, it will help you engage with candidates that are on the active job market, but not on the passive job market. Interesting. Correct. I think the strategy to attract passive candidates is a whole different one nonetheless. Yeah. So, um, yes. Which is like the area I play in. Which is the area you play in. Yeah. Yes. I've, I play in that area too, by the way. I, I know. <laughs> but, you know, talking about AI, what I really love about it and passionate about it, especially having represent um, companies and brands and high tech is voice is power, Rick. Yeah. Voice is power. A lot of human decisions are influenced by how we connect through intangibles like communication. Uh, candidates now will have a voice and how they demonstrate that during the assessment process. That can be really vital. It gives us another competitive edge that's really compelling in the most competitive market that we see right now. So one can really, again, I go back to having the opportunity to articulate their unique selling point, their USP, and what that does to translate to contributions to employers. Okay. So... I'm going to take it a step further because I think that an actual assessment is way more powerful than a resume. Okay. And and so, um, now yeah. this is in terms of from a company perspective. Okay. And are you talking about the traditional assessment where the recruiter actually is conducting an assessment slash phone screen? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. They receive the resume, they like what they see, and they're interested to learn more about the candidate. I don't necessarily like what I see on the resume. But you need to find out but more. But I need to find out more. Mm -hmm. So I have found that um, I found great people that have come out of mediocre companies that like traditionally probably wouldn't have gotten called. Oh, I agree. And and I've called them and I found some gold nuggets that way. I have too. And and by doing so, when you actually invest into a phone conversation with somebody and you find out what their wound and their desire and their accomplishments are, now you've got something to work with that's way more valuable than a resume. I, I agree. Th and and when when hiring managers get used to this format or get fed that candidate, 
they don't really have the ability to screen that person out based on a resume because it's more based on your assessment. And ultimately, you're hiring people. You're not hiring a resume. Absolutely. But when, you know, I, I beg to differ, and I'll tell you why. Think about the traditional platform of conducting recruitment phone screens. If we take that, if we introduce the video resume as a supplement, maybe we think about taking that out of the process. It can become a more efficient process, cost savings step, due to the fact that you receive targeted content, the ability to share profiles internally, flexibility when you can view them, giving recruiters a lot more bandwidth. You may get the same type of information or a little sneak peek for but you to make an effective decision in the get-go. All right, so here's my, if you're trying to give recruiters a lot more bandwidth. When I started in recruiting, I was expected to make 100 calls out a day. No recruiters today make 100 calls out a mm -hmm. day. I mean, a good day on the phone for recruiters, 20 calls. Uh, right. Right. I was even going to say a dozen. Yeah, a dozen. Yeah, you've, a dozen. you've done a great job. Absolutely. We, we don't pick up the phone like we used to. Well, so I think maybe I come from that old school of thought, but it, it's effective in such a way that you, you can't get to know a person without talking to them on the phone or at least bringing them in for an interview or, or what have you. <clears throat> you can get an idea of how they might mash up against your wish list, which isn't really necessarily a job description, but a wish list of skills. But I, I want to throw back on, on the video clip because I have a, this, here's, the, here's the thing with video clips. How can I get an accurate picture of who a person is with a 60 second or even a three minute video clip? Again, you won't, but you yeah. will get a keen insight to make a better decision than okay. you would from a traditional resume. So that's to, <laughs> to determine whether or not I make the exactly. phone call. Exactly. And perhaps, you know, traditionally sometimes we'll spend 30 minutes to 60 minutes doing a thorough phone assessment yeah. uh, with a candidate based on the traditional resume. Maybe that time introducing this other tool to the process, you know, now we get to 20 to 30 minutes and we can make an accurate judgment call. Yeah. Not to mention, you know, we get to share with hiring leaders, decision makers, and see their perspective and get their buy-in as well. So we have, we have our recommendation, we have the candidate's resume, then we have the candidate's talent lens video, and the hiring manager now has a full, you know, a full box of, of, of three different really imperative areas right from the horse's mouth. To make but a better the hiring, decision. But does the hiring manager need that much information to decide on whether or not to bring somebody I in think for it's, an I think it's very valuable. I think that's where things really need to get shaken up. So I we have a hard enough time, though, with hiring managers just getting feedback from an interview from them, right? So why would they look at three different forms of content? I don't know. I take it from the perspective of I'm going to try and make that hiring manager's job super really easy. easy by saying, look it, I've done an assessment. This is like a great candidate. Here's why Correct. you need to bring them in. Correct. I don't want them in the decision-making process of like whether or not they uh -huh. can, they're going to bring them in for an interview. But one message to the hiring manager on how we present candidates can include that, 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 that video clip. So it's yeah. really not adding a lot of extra work per se. And uh, uh, good hiring managers, and this is probably a topic for another show, <laughs> but good hiring managers that are really passionate about building strategic progressive teams yes. will take the time you know, and, and, and really put in more than 100% to really collaborate with their recruiting and their strategic HR business partners to make better decisions and to create that excitement and enthusiasm. And that's where I think, you know, it's a great opportunity for us to be those influencers and to coach the other side on yeah. the benefits because we're the subject matter experts in hiring. Well, when you're talking about good hiring managers, you're looking at 20% of I, I, other, agree. Right? So, I agree. Um, I agree. How do you reach the other 80% who who typically would screen everything out and be problematic, right? Exactly. Now? I also love when hiring managers are excited to interview. And I think of uh, sharing a video uh, to hiring you know, managers and decision makers, it really heightens a candidate's chances and creates excitement on the hiring manager's part to meet them. You know what? I think there's a way to make them more excited, too. You put... Um, you put like little, like microsecond clips of like a teaser. Yeah, like of of a beer or a woman <laughs> in a bikini. Or, like what was that? 
<laughs> that would definitely grab attention. Right. Right. Absolutely. All right. So, uh, <laughs> Anything to create some action is what we're all about. Absolutely. <laughs> so I think we just found subconscious subliminal messaging within we video did. clips. <laughs> yes, we, just, we did. We just found a new business. We sure did. Wow. Rick, I'm going to have a meeting with you this afternoon about Absolutely. that. Absolutely. <laughs> all right. So the effective use of resume is really to use it as a tool, not a wall. Absolutely. And, um, and in hindsight, I think creating video resumes is a great opportunity for branding, not only for the candidates, but it pushes hiring managers to say, wait a minute, on our side as well, let's also create some videos on what it's like to work with my team. Sure. Here's the exciting technology we're working on. Here's how we're disrupting the marketplace and getting candidates really excited, especially in this competitive landscape and war for talent where we really just would love to have that long list of candidates knocking on our door. Okay, so video clips with sub subliminal messaging. <laughs> Recruiters pick up the phone, make the phone call, right? Mm -hmm. Call Thinking more about people, branding. do more, more Ab assessments. Absolutely. Um, and then really um, the crutch of having a resume in the interview process, I think it's really important that we stop doing that. I Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, because uh, a lot of times um, a candidate will come in for an interview and they'll Correct. essentially like look, okay, so tell me about, you know. Yes, it, it, you, yes. It's, yeah. not very, it's not very exciting. It doesn't get the candidates very excited. And I can't imagine that the person sitting on the other side of that interview deck yeah. is really, really robust about uh, their enthusiasm no, as well. It's so I, 1912. I'm a proponent about the resume gets you in the door. It's time to have that conversation and to really understand the mutual benefits of what you both can bring one another another and really taught keeping a value mindset for candidates and for employers my gosh it's a great opportunity for you to test the market and really see how someone would approach a problem really give them a problem and see their so solution oriented approach to it and with that we're out of time <laughs> <laughs> Anita thanks for your time investment on the higher power radio show today Thank you, and Rick. welcome to the higher power community glad um, to be here now, I'm sure that people would like to find out about all those fantastic jobs at Huawei. <laughs> <laughs> yes. How do they, they reach would. you? Well, they can contact me on LinkedIn. I'm under Anita Conti at Huawei Technologies. I also have a website at www.anitaksolutions.com. And I am also a fan of career coaching where I share a lot of tips on job search, interview activity, and executive coaching. All right, cool. Before I uh, let you go, um, spell out your email address for me. That would be great. Anita, A-N-I-T-A dot Conti, K-A-N-T-I, at Huawei, H-U-A-W-E-I dot com. Perfect. All right, thank I want to you. thank our listening audience for tuning into this week's episode of the Higher Power Radio Show. Quick thanks to our team, our engineer, Paul Roberts, our producers, Andrea Ballin, Shanti Ryle, and Kim Iverson. If you'd like to, if you like the show, or if you don't like it, subscribe anyway. Rate it and review the show. Um, your input is welcome and needed to improve the content of our show. Uh, join our community at higherpowerradio.com. That's H-I-R-E-P-O-W-E-R radio.com you can subscribe to us on itunes stitcher tune in spotify youtube really any podcast platform if you like you can follow us on linkedin and facebook at a higher power radio show or follow me on twitter at rick underscore gerard tune in next week our guest is going to be dane petchel it's going to be an interesting show you guys are going to have to figure this one out but he's the um founder and president of oracle college planning oh great I'm your host, Rick Gerard, and you have been listening to the Higher Power Radio Show. Aloha. Thank you for listening to Higher Power with Rick Gerard on OC Talk Radio. When you use the Premier Rewards Gold Card from American Express, the rewards points can keep on multiplying by three with triple points on airfare.